In yesterday's video, I played this embiggen druid over here on the deck tracker. And it was a bit of a meme. As you can see, it's got a couple mad bombers in it. And then some other sketchy inclusions like traveling healer. But the deck actually performed somewhat well. So I wanted to update it with some more reasonable cards. Uh, the first thing I noticed is that I was playing two animated broomstick, two guardian animals, and no like threshers. So that was probably just a mistake. We've got the Threshers in here now. And just in general, I wanted to expand the Guardian Animals package. So I've still got all these big ones. But uh, we need to have some smaller ones too, because once you cast Embiggen on these things, they cost six and can't get pulled. So we've still got the Hippogriffs, still got the Mukla, but I added two copies of Escaped Mana Saber and even a copy of Emperor Cobra because we really just don't have that many beasts to work with. Emperor Cobra also has the benefit of being summonable from the Guardian Animals, even after two Embiggens. So potentially we could still hit, like, Mukla Cobra at that point. And then at this point, the deck has a ton of beasts in it, so I thought it would make sense to play Shando Wildclaw. It's sort of like a third copy of Embiggen, but it's also good in the late game, like, after Embiggen, because you can copy a uh, like a 4-8 Hippogriff, or you can copy a 7-6 Twilight Runner. So yeah, I think Shando is a pretty good inclusion in the stack. I also changed around the early game a little bit, and added a couple copies of Bone Chewer Brawler and Guardian Og Merchant. They work well together, but they're also just good cards on their own. Bone Chewer Brawler is a cheap taunt to help keep us alive. And Og Merchant can be really good to land a Divine Shield on a big embiggened beast or whatever. So yeah, I definitely like the improvements I made to this deck. And so far I'm 7-5 and five with it, so it's performing reasonably well. Do I keep Guardian Animals Lightning Bloom against Mage? Could even keep Mana Saber with that? Hmm, Mana Saber doesn't actually do anything. I think I want to hit Embiggen. And Shando. Can't forget about that card. This hand is maybe coin Mana Saber into Twilight Runner. That's pretty good. Could trade my broomstick into that, but probably not worth. I think I still like going with this curve. The strength in numbers could have changed things, but I still like going for a Mana Saber here. Then I have my choice of five drops next turn. Or I guess I could potentially go strength in numbers, Shadow Weaver, Broomstick, or just these two and not attack with this. A lot of options. I think I want to clear his board, though. He has two arcane missiles in his hand. So, there's a good chance he could clear my board here. But it does probably cost him his whole turn. It doesn't even go for one missile, huh? Well, happy to play Twilight Runner here. Ok, 
fair. That card definitely gets better against my deck, but it's fair enough to just play it there. Get in there, Emperor Cobra. Thinking about playing Chinvala, Ras, Mana Giant, Jandus. That's a fine trade for the Cobra as well. Oh, Shando. Shando's really good when I have uh, Guardian Animals as a follow-up. I think I'm actually just going to play seven mana worth of minions here. Lake Thresher. So I can either trade the 4-3 and the 1-1 or the 5-7. He has a bunch of 1-mana spells in his hand, nothing that could be like Flame Strike or Blizzard. I think I'm fine with this trade, just leave more threats on the table. I have a lot of stats on the board. Hopefully this isn't an evocation turn. Even if I get full cleared, Guardian Animals is still good, but I would prefer to not get full cleared. I wish when I played Evocation I got one mana spells. I feel like there's always like multiple power of creations when I play that card. Oh, he got a Conjurer's Calling as well. At least his Conjurer's Calling was kind of bad. Easy guardian animals. I can't stop another conjurer's calling. Wait, did he get that mana cyclone last turn off that other power of creation? Is my opponent that lucky? Not sure why I didn't get Conjurer's Calling to that turn. I'm sure he'll draw another Mana Giant though. Well, that's a hell of a draw. So many contradictions. Down. 
I think I like keeping this guy alive and healthy. This board is just a lot more threatening than if this thing had like one health or whatever. Like he could die here if he's not careful. Well, he has a ray of frost, but still. You don't pick the I do risk this thing getting devolved, but uh, I can't be that unlucky, can I? Oh boy, another Ray of Frost. Easy face hit. Okay, so I complete the side quest here. Nothing I pull is that good, though. But, whatever. I think this Hippogriff was the best target I could hit, so that's pretty nice. Oh, there's so much random rolling fireball math here. I think I'm chilling here. I'm actually probably favored from this position, somehow. I was mentally checked out of this game a few turns ago, when my opponent had the greatest evocation of all time. Oh, please discover a Frost Nova. He hit the two best ones. But I've still got quite a bit of power in play. I have this broomstick, but I have some terrible draws too. That's lethal. I am amazed that I won this game. No Embiggins versus... The greatest evocation that's ever been cast. Really good hand. Toss the mana saber to hit Shando. Wait a second. As long as I draw something playable on turn 4, I'm pretty satisfied with this hand. That's not playable on turn 4. So it's this deck, huh? What do I even freeze? Does this egg ever attack next turn? It is cold in the shadow. I guess it could be like Inner Rage, Shield of Honor, uh, Coin Bloodsworn Mercenary. I mean, I still get kind of fucked up by that even if his thing can't attack. I'm just playing this Og Merchant for Tempo here. The battle cry isn't super good, but it's okay. I do get to finish my side quest next turn, which is really nice. And I have a couple good options to do it with. Skipper time. Someone's 
Okay. Two skippers down, at least. Uh... I don't know if I really care about leaving this skipper up. Maybe I just play, like, a stealth mana saber, and then this skipper is actually kind of annoying for him. Although I am pulling a thing off strength and numbers that he can trade into. I still think I like just playing Mana Saber. Bone Chewer Brawler is one of my smallest things, but it's got four power against a three four, and that's all it needs. He missed one armor, right? Really? On the skipper? Why, though? I think I like just playing a big thing here. Twilight Runner is fine. But there's like a world where the Twilight Runner dies to bombs, which is really awful. Is it worth killing the Boombot to have a smaller minion? Wow, four face damage. I think it was worth hero powering here, but I'm not totally sure. Wow. My guy having stealth made this a lot easier for him to play. I can't quite kill this. Let's just try to protect the Twilight Runner. I could have put the one damage in this to weaken it, but damaging it so he can copy it or rampage it or... I don't even know what this deck does nowadays. But yeah, damaging it was kind of bad, I think. On the bright side, even if he does end up rampaging it, this uh, Broomstick Thresher combo is really strong. Looks like the Lake Thresher is still really good here. Let's me kill Grom, but I can already just kill Grom like this. I think I just prefer this line of play. Still got the Thresher combo in my pocket. I have played a lot of my taunts, unfortunately. I'm out of life total where I definitely could just die to some Korkron Bloodsworn Mercenary nonsense. But at least I have seen one Inner Rage, one Shield of Honor already. Another Embiggen is nice. It's probably just time for the Thresher. It's really strong here. I kind of hate missing my hero power, but I don't think this specific breakpoint means anything. Probably a live wire lance. That is still six damage over three turns. Well. I don't think it's ever getting the 5th or 6th point of damage, but it's 4 damage. Ooh, 
Wish I hadn't played the second in Biggin. Now these don't do anything. If I could pull Hippogriff here, it'd be really strong. Okay. I think I was still pretty favored from here, because he needed at least a three-card combo to kill me, and he only had two cards in his hand, so it would have been really specific. I'm going to keep Shando, but it might be too slow against Hunter. Wow, the sand is good now. I got myself a nice curve. And Biggin still welcome any of the next several turns. Okay, well, my Bone Shearer Brawler is going to look pretty pathetic up against whatever he's playing this turn. But that's okay. I think I would rather it be a Phase Stalker than a Wolpertinger, but I'm not sure. They're both a lot stronger than what I have. It is a Phase Stalker. So I can Frozen Shadow Weaver that. I'm just going to do this. I don't think freezing it really does much. He played a secret instead of hero powering. Must be a good secret. Probably a freeze. Oh, pack tactics. <laughs> okay. All right, well. I found out earlier that if it's Freezing Trap, I don't get the mana off of the Mana Saber, which sucks and doesn't make that much sense to me. But that's okay. My turn is still really strong here. Yeah, I'd say I'm ahead right now. Five nine hippogriff, too strong, dude. Too strong. <laughs> 